Happy Monday, everybody. Leo Laporte here, your tech guy. Time to talk about streaming church services or any event next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hey, everybody. Leo Laporte here, your tech guy. I got a, a question from Roger. He says, is the ATEM Mini Pro ISO and its software enough to produce a simple video mix of live speaker, scrolling scripture text or hymnal lyrics, and a live performance in a small church setting? Yes. But there's a lot to unpack here. So let me explain. I've even brought some friends because, of course... That's what we do here. We stream live audio and video. That's part of our podcast network. And we've been doing it for some time now. So uh, we've developed some expertise. And, of course, as people go home, uh, we've had to figure out ways to let our hosts stream from home. And so we've got a lot of technology that can help you with this. I'm going to break it down into three separate parts here. There's the hardware you need in the church or your group or club. Uh, there's the software or hardware you need to switch it. So there's capture, there's switching uh, or effects and that kind of thing. And then the third part is streaming, putting it out on the internet so everybody can watch it. This varies a little bit depending on whether you're doing it live or you're going to record it and then stream it. I'm going to act as if you're doing it live, just as I'm doing right now. We also record it and then offer it for download. So that's the the beauty. This will work for both. But we'll talk about the live situation. And we're going to start with capture. So you're going to need some cameras. Um, you can go as inexpensively as uh, the Canon Vixia camcorders we use. Um, or you can use cameras you have. I actually use my uh, digital SLRs, anything that can give you what we call clean live HDMI out can be used for a camera. So for instance, this uh, Sony uh, Alpha 7 camera, I can change the settings in the menu that take away any, you know, any bars or information on the screen. It's just the clean HDMI out and it will shoot live HDMI. It even has an HDMI port. Now, you can put those directly into a computer if you have the right kind of capture hardware. So we're going to talk about two different kinds of capture hardware. One you mentioned, the ATEM, and the other one is actually the least expensive choice. There are a lot of these. This is the one everybody tries to use, but it's expensive. It's about 100 bucks, 130 bucks, something like this, from Elgato. It's called the CamLink 4K, and you see what it has on it is a USB 3.1 connector on one side, and an HDMI port on the other side. It'll take the HDMI from any device, typically a camera, but it could be from a computer, and it'll put it into your computer. And it'll look on your computer as if it's a streaming uh, camcorder, kind of like a Logitech video camera. This is another way to do it. If you go online on Amazon, you'll see there's quite a few of these uh, devices for as little as 30 or $40. This one was $100. Uh, probably didn't need to spend that much. Same idea, USB 3 out, and in I've got HDMI. This one has two because it has a pass-through. That's why I spent a little extra for it. So I could put a monitor on here to see what I'm getting on this. But this is only good for one camera. You mentioned the Blackmagic Design ATEM, and that actually is probably a better choice for anybody who wants to use multiple cameras. This is the ATEM Mini, not the one you talked about, which was more expensive. This is the $300 base model, and it works exactly as the CamLink did with the difference that it has four HDMI ports. That means four cameras in, or a computer, anything with HDMI out, most computers have HDMI out now. Or you can, if they have video out, 
Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 2, you can easily get a dongle that will convert that. That's where you, you know, you play back your hymns using uh, worship software. Uh, you could have cameras then for the preacher. You could have cameras for the choir. Four cameras is enough for most basic videography. We use a, a switcher from uh, TriCaster. New Tech makes those. They're very expensive. I think ours is about $25,000. But it has up to eight ports. I think four is enough for most people. And then it has either HDMI out or, and this is most likely what you'll use, webcam out. This is going to look to your computer like a single webcam. So this is pretty cool. That means you can have four different cameras, and just as you would in a big boy studio, switch to the different cameras. I'm watching the preacher, preacher close up. This is uh, the wide shot of the preacher and the and the whole uh, uh, front of the church, perhaps. This is a picture of the chorus of the choir singing, and this one is a shot of the hymnal or of the um, uh, the reading of the day, whatever on screen camera uh, computer stuff you want to see. We have transitions built into the hardware here, including keying. The ability to have picture and picture. You can choose the dissolves. You can even fade to black. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff just built into this basic hardware. And Blackmagic offers ATEM software for free as a download that gives you a lot more capabilities. You can get as deep as you want. I think this is a really good choice. Now, this is only $300. You mentioned the newer ATEM. There's a couple of new ATEMs. There's the ATEM Mini Pro. And there's the ATEM Mini ISO. Uh, they've actually expanded this range quite a bit. Um, there's the ATEM Mini that I have. The Pro and the ISO have additional features I don't think you need for your church. Um, the, the, the idea with the Mini Pro is it has built-in hardware to do streaming. So you can stream direct to YouTube Live or other solutions. The ATEM Mini ISO, which, by the way, the ATEM Mini starts at 300 the mini pro is 600 and the atem mini iso is eight or nine hundred dollars but it can do a little bit different it can do a clean feed of all the inputs which means you can record isos that's a short for isolation video sometimes uh, you you'll want that in some studios so that you can do a second edit after the fact. Remember, with a hardware switcher like the ATEM, you're switching live. You're saying, okay, take the preacher. Okay, do this. The ATEM Mini Ice Pro ISO will let you also record, and you're going to have to buy recorders. It doesn't include the recording capability. You're going to have to you record each camera individually. So if later you said, you know, I didn't really want to be looking at the preacher there. I wanted to be looking at the choir. You can go back and re-edit. I do not recommend that. That's an unnecessary expense. This basic model, the $300 model, is all you need. There are other choices. I brought along uh, this. This is an older version of what's called the Mevo camera. And this is kind of an interesting product that came from um, a company called Livestream. And the idea of the Mevo is it's a single camera, but it's such high resolution, it's actually 4K, that it's it, you can actually, in effect, have multiple cameras in a single camera. So the idea, and it also has streaming built in. Originally, it was just to Livestream. They've added Facebook Live, YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, all the streamers. And it's kind of a cool idea. You'll run software for this on your uh, iPad or your iPhone, and it will show you the full 4K resolution, but you can, with your finger, move it over. So this can be positioned in such a way that it can see the preacher. If you have a projection of the hymns, of the lyrics from the hymns or uh, of the reading, and you have the choir, if you can get it all in a single shot, in effect, you can have a zoom in to the preacher, a zoom into the choir, a zoom into the hymnal. You can pull back and get them all. It can do it automatically or you can do it with the, the switcher that's built into the iPad or the iPhone. I think it's kind of an interesting product. Uh, the only drawback to this Mevo is it records audio from here. Audio really is an important part of this. We consider audio, maybe it's my radio background, to be the most important part of the whole thing. And I think what you're going to probably want to do is not even use the audio inputs on the uh, on the Mevo, but instead 
get the audio from one of the HDMI ports. If you have a good camera microphone or a shotgun microphone, do it that way. Um, or you can get a microphone that will, a, a shotgun microphone or individual lobs that will go into here. The ATEM is nice because it has that built-in audio mixer. I think that makes it a lot more useful for all of this. Now, as for software, you have a variety of choices. Remember, the ATEM uh, Mini, the $300 version, doesn't do what the ATEM Pro does. It doesn't stream by itself. It just creates a single video, which you then put into your computer and stream for yourself. A lot of ways you can uh, parse this. This is actually a completely software-based version. You don't even need the switcher. This is what Micah does. Um, it's basically an in Macintosh studio switcher called Ecam. It's from e c a -M -M dot com, and it actually is a pretty cool app. This might be the least expensive way to do what you want to. You still need the multiple cameras, but you can add overlays. You can switch between them. You can put in pre-recorded video. Micah uses it for a close-up. You can share your desktop. So the advantage of this is you could have the the hymnal on the Mac scrolling if you use worship software you'll have that ready and then you can use Ecamm to switch back and forth between the the minister the choir and the hymnal that's pretty cool so that is Ecamm not very expensive and it does a very good job there are even free solutions that'll do this a lot of twitch streamers use OBS studio uh, this is a switcher and streamer all in one so this runs on your computer Windows or Mac and uh, they use it to capture their game video and to capture their pictures to switch back and forth. It is pretty powerful, and it's absolutely free. This is from the OBS Project at obsproject.com. So those are two very, very good uh, choices uh, for you. So you can do it in hardware. A lot of people, my friend Alex Lindsay says, hardware switching is the best. Uh, of course, he's in mission-critical situations where you don't want a computer to crash. You don't want it to fail. You want it to work every time. Uh, he's using something a little bit more powerful than the A10 Mini. I really like the A10 Mini in conjunction with streaming software. You're going to need something that will stream it out. Uh, there are a variety of choices that will stream it to uh, multiple sources. Uh, one that I hear a lot, we don't use that. We actually have a box here called the Elemental that will take this single stream from the switcher and then stream it to multiple endpoints, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitch, Ustream. You know, you can see us in a variety of places. You could do the same thing with your services. You don't really need anything special. If you just want to put it on YouTube Live, um, it's a pretty simple thing to do. You just pipe that into your computer and then be running the YouTube software on your computer. That, that couldn't really be simpler. Um, so, uh, but there are some software solutions if you want to want to stream to multiple places. This is Restream.io that takes a sing single stream and then streams it to a multiple places: Twitch, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. This is a very popular one. Uh, there are a number of companies that do this, and in fact, this one, uh, OneStream.live, even has a special deal for churches. Uh, you might want to inquire uh, with them because they do pretty much the same thing. The idea is you have a single stream, which then you can stream to a variety of endpoints. That's what they call them. YouTube or Facebook is the endpoint. So you can stream it to a variety of endpoints. So uh, I think you'll find there are a number of people that do this specifically for churches that will give you a pretty good discount. Uh, let's see if I covered it all. You got the cameras, you got the capture devices, whether it's the ATEM or just a little capture card, and then you got the software running on your computer that connects to YouTube or Facebook and automatically restreams it. Um, there is, you know, there are a variety of solutions for churches that have, you know, uh, worship. Uh, uh, software. Some of these have streaming built in. I'm not an expert on those. That'd certainly be worth looking into. But yeah, the uh, you asked the main question you asked, which is, does the ATEM Mini Pro ISO do what you want? Yes, but you don't need that big, expensive Pro ISO version. Just get the $300 ATEM Mini. They're a little hard, hard to find, and there are some things you'll have to solve. You'll have to solve the audio solution, maybe a lavalier microphone for the minister going into mic one, maybe a 
a, a wider range microphone for the choir going into mic two. The software that you run for the ATEM on your computer will help you mix that. It has a full mixer, and then you'll have to figure out a way to get uh, four camera inputs or three cameras and a computer input into this thing. This is such a great box. It's so simple. It's so inexpensive. It's hard not to uh, recommend it. It's a really good choice. A lot of ways to solve this. Um, there's no one way, uh, but we've ended up... In fact, Micah uses that Ecamm software I mentioned. I use the ATEM Mini at home. Uh, Ant has his own switcher that he likes to use. There are a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, but there's some, there's some signposts and, uh, and some links that you can follow to figure out. Have a great time. I think this is a really big opportunity for any group or church or synagogue, temple, mosque, because once you solve this, when we all can come back and worship in person, of course you'll probably want to keep the streaming going for parishioners who can't come in, who are disabled or homebound or just not feeling well and they want to be able to join the services remotely. You're setting up something, I think, that you're going to keep using. And that's one of the ways that COVID is kind of is kind of interesting. It's changed the way we think about everything we do. And I think in the long run, in possibly a, a very positive way. Once you get this gear, I think you'll find lots of ways to use it. Thanks for the question. Our show today brought to you by, as always, by our friends at LastPass. With your IT department really struggling these days, they've got a big job. Not only new threats, new ransomware challenges, but new regulations. Strong security is complicated. LastPass lets employees do their work securely, whether they're in the office or from home. They never store your master password. So hackers can't get it. Your data is only decrypted on the device. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you with your password management. Lastpass.com slash twit. Well, I brought all my gear in. Now I have to go home and set it all up again so I can continue to stream from home. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ask the Tech Guy. If you've got a question, I would love to help you out. Email askthetechguy at twit.tv. We get many more questions than I have time to answer, but I'll do the best I can. And I'll see you right here next week. Leo Laporte, I'm your tech guy. Take care. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.